Our first segment tonight, It's All Been Theater. <clears throat> Good evening, and welcome to It's All Been Theater. I am your humble host, your stalwart storyteller, your nasty, nasty narrator, Sir Hubert Donald Redkin, Fievel Noir Esquire, the third. Way back in 1926, a hack of a writer named Alan Alexander Milne and I were having tea. Well, he was having tea and I was having brandy because I am a grown-up. Ali was going on and on about a dumb teddy bear and I was barely listening. But as I am, of course, a genius, inspiration struck, and eventually, as much to stop him from prattling on as anything else, I gave him some ideas for stories involving said bear. Then Ali, rather than publish together and split the profits like a gentleman, went and wrote down the tales and passed them off as his own. Dignity. Well, the last laugh is on Ali because now he's dead and his copyright has expired. So I can tell you the narratives as they were actually meant to be told. And so here tonight, for the very first time, I present the first in the series, the definitive version of Winnie the Pooh and some bees. Our story begins in the Hundred Acre Wood, which was a mere 43 acres and a bit of a braggart, if you ask me. We go to Edward Bear, known by those unlucky enough to make his acquaintance as Winnie the Pooh, an unfortunate moniker which originated from an incident that doesn't bear <laughs> repeating. <laughs> and which actually resulted in him never wearing trousers again. Edward was a true nudist at heart, but occasionally he still put on a shirt or jacket of some kind, mostly to avoid nosy documentarians. Though not today. Today he wasn't worried about clothes. He was hungry. The bear was always hungry because he basically just ate and shat in the woods, as bears are wont to do. And anyone that says the contrary is a damn filthy liar. Anyway, on this morning, when he craved honey, as he often did, but he was out of the substance, as he often was. So he sat outside his home and began the nearly impossible task, at least for him, of thinking of a solution to his problem. At first, when he didn't notice the very handsome bee flying above him, Oh, bother. I wonder where I can find some honey. <laughs> Quiet, Beezus. I'm trying to think. <laughs> that buzzing noise means something. You don't get a buzzy noise like that, just buzzing and buzzing without it meaning something. Duh, buzz. If there's a buzzing noise, and the only reason for making buzzing noise that I know of is because you're a bee. <laughs> Beezus, you are a bee, aren't you? Yes. That must be why you buzz all the time. Figure that out all by yourself, did you? I buzz because I must when I make honey. Oh, yes, of course. And the only reason for being a bee that I know of is, is to make honey. Well, that's not the only reason. I have a great many interests and hobbies. And the only reason for making honey is that so I can eat it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pump the brakes there, Papa Bear. That's insane. But Winnie ignored Beezus and began to climb the tree. <laughs> Okay, what are you doing? I am climbing my tree to get to the honey you keep at the top of it. Why? So that I may eat it. Isn't it funny how bears like honey? 
Buzz, buzz, buzz. I wonder why he does. Everyone likes honey. I don't know why, though. It's just my ex's ferment. It's very funny, though, that if bears were bees, they'd build their nests at the bottom of tweeds. Yeah, it's really freaky how you want to eat our poop. So, really, we're actually doing you a favor, making it inaccessible. Mmm, I can almost taste it. Oh, okay, watch it. That branch isn't... <laughs> Poo fell down, 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 to the ground, smacking every branch on his way. Oh. Oh. There he goes. Oh. And again. Oh. And again. Had he been a real bear and not a stuffed one, he probably would have died. Oh. Come to think of it as he is stuffed, why would he need to eat? How could he even do so? Al is a complete imbecile if I... Oh dear. Oh. <laughs> well, it appears Pooh has stopped falling now and is crawling out of the gorse bush. Best we get back to him then as he goes to find the human who Pooh thinks was his friend, but is actually his bully. The one who nicknamed the pitiful creature in the first place, a boy named Christopher Robin. Good morning, Christopher Robins. Good morning, Winnie there, Pooh. I wonder if you have such a thing as a balloon about you. A balloon? Yes. I just said to myself, coming along, I wonder if Christopher Robin has such a thing as a balloon about him. I just said it to myself, thinking of balloons and wondering. What do you want a balloon for? Honey. (laughs) (laughs) But you don't get honey with balloons. I do. (laughs) Well, I was at Rabbit's birthday party yesterday and I happened to bring home two balloons. Oh, wonderful. But they're both mine and I don't wish to share. Oh, come on, Christopher Robin, please. Why should I? I needed ever so much to get honey for my rumbly tumbly. I don't see how a balloon will get you honey. I will use it to float up. Oh, well, I don't have any helium. It won't float. I see you have a green balloon and a blue one. When you go after honey with a balloon, it is a great thing not to let the bees know you're coming. Obviously. Now, if you have a green balloon, they might think you are only part of the tree and not notice you. And if you have a blue balloon, they might think you are only part of the sky and not notice you. The question is, which is more likely? Wouldn't they notice you underneath the balloon? They might, or they might not. You never can tell with bees. Well, if you're going to float up a tree on a balloon, I will give you one of mine, and I'll find some helium for you. Oh, thank you, Christopher Robin. You are the best friend in the whole wide world. Okay, I have an idea. You can take the blue balloon and then disguise yourself as a black cloud. How would I do that? Roll around that mud puddle over there. That's right. Go ahead. Keep rolling. That's right. Well, I go fill the balloon. I'll be right back. Roll around some more. You should be filthy dirty. (laughs) And so Winnie the Pooh rolled in the mud, becoming positively filthy, while Christopher Robin filled his blue balloon with enough helium to slowly carry the stuffed animal into the air because the boy could think of no other way to embarrass and ridicule Pooh more than what the bear was willing to do to himself. They soon put their plan into motion, and Winnie the Pooh began to float into the air. Oh, what fresh hell is this? I am a storm cloud, little bee. Don't I look like a storm cloud? You look like a mud-covered lunatic bear holding on to a balloon. You look great, just like a storm cloud. Not really. This... (laughs) This bee doesn't agree. Ignore him, it's just one bee. My friend says I look like a storm cloud. Your friend is lying. No, I'm not. 
<laughs> I don't look like a small black cloud in the blue sky. Nope, not at all. Don't listen to me. Oh, oh, well, perhaps to the other bees up above, I look different. You never can tell with babies. No bee is that stupid. You have us confused with dumb bees, will you? You won't tell the other bees, will you, Bezos? No need to. They already know. Listen. Oh, bother. Christopher Robin! Yes, Peter. <laughs> I think the bees suspect something. Oh, what sort of thing do they suspect? I don't know. But something tells me they're suspicious. Hmm. Perhaps they think you're after their honey. That may be. You never can tell with bees. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. Unless you actually ask us. Christopher Robin? Yes, what now? Do you have an umbrella in your house? I, I think so. I wish you would bring it out here and walk up and down with it and look at me, up at me every now and then and say, tut, tut, it looks like rain. <laughs> I, I think if you did that, it would help the deception which we are practicing on these bees. <laughs> 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 Silly old bear. <laughs> A few minutes pass. Oi! I got the umbrella. Oh, there you are. I was beginning to get anxious. I have discovered that these are definitely suspicious. What was your first clue? <laughs> Shall I put my umbrella up? Yes, we must be practical. <laughs> That would be a first. The important bee to deceive is the queen bee. Can you see which is the queen bee from down there? No. A pity. Well, why don't you put your umbrella up and I'll sing a little cloud song. <laughs> tut, tut, it looks like rain. Tut, tut, it looks like rain. That's real good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> To be a cloud floating in the blue, every little cloud always singing aloud. Is anyone buying this? <laughs> How sweet to be a cloud floating in the blue. It makes him very proud to be a little cloud. Okay, enough of this. Let's just kill him. I mean, sing him. Christopher! Oh, Robin! Yes, Blue Bear. I have just been. Oh! thinking I have come to a very important decision. He's out of the wrong sort of bees. You better be leave it. Oh, are they? Quite wrong. Oh, so I, I should think they would make the wrong sort of honey. Hold it! <laughs> are you insulting our poop? <laughs> are they? Yes, so I think I shall Come down now. How? Keep stinging, boys. Keep stinging. I don't even know how bee stings are hurting a stuffed animal. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps I should have made further edits. I do not know how to, I can get down, but oh, I must come at once. I can shoot your balloon with my BB gun. No, that sounds... It sounds dangerous and... Oh! Oh, no. Did I miss? You didn't exactly miss. But you missed the balloon. I'm so sorry. Reloading. Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh, I think... Oh! oh. That's what you get, punk! <laughs> well, Pooh fell back to the ground. His arms were so stiff from holding the balloon that he couldn't lower them for a week. And seven times through the washing machine didn't get all the mud off of the creature either. 
So, as you might have guessed, the moral of this story is to not write books about dumb bears, because no one will ever read them, and no one will ever, ever want to make them into an animated film. Children are smarter than this drivel. Alas. Smarter, yes. Alas, I have been Sir Hubert Donald Redkin Fievel Normal Esquire, the third. And this was It's All Been Theater. Good night and sleep without a goddamn stuffed animal, you cretins. It's All Been Done Radio Hour, number 402. It's All Been Theater, number 13, Winnie the Pooh and Some Bees. This episode was written by Jerome Wetzel and A.A. A. Milne and directed by Samantha Stark. It starred Dan Kondo as Sir Hubert and Beezus, Grace Wilson as Winnie the Pooh, and Nick Argenbright as Christopher Robin. The episode was narrated by Darren Essler. Our Foley artist was J.T. Walker. Our technical director is Shane Stefanchik. Our musical director is Kristen Green. Theme songs are composed by Nathan Haley with lyrics by Jerome Wetzel. This podcast was edited by Chris Allen. Check out our website at iabdpresents.com. We also want to thank both Circle 270 Media, which this podcast is a part of, and Boxland Media, our host performance space. Our next live show is Saturday, March 11th. Get your tickets by visiting boxlandmedia.com. Have a great week. It's All Been Done presents. Who's got the time?